G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for my weekly tips video. Sorry that this video is a little late. It's been a really busy week and this is actually my third video since Monday, so the grind is real. We're approaching the halfway mark of the season, which is pretty crazy, but what it does mean is that we're actually starting to get a real good feel for where certain teams are this year. Before I go into my tips though, I do have a video on my new channel, Jesse Thomas, uh, where I've released a video talking about the end of Game of Thrones. If you're interested at all, you should check it out. The link to that channel is in my description. But for now, let's go through round 11. So the first game of the week is North and Richmond playing off at Marvel Stadium on Friday night. Now, North are coming off an inspirational win last week with Brad Scott announcing he was leaving the club. Historically speaking, when a team changes coach, what can happen sometimes is that the team get a bit of a lift and perform pretty well for a few weeks. With Richmond's injury list the way it is, North are playing Richmond at a pretty good time and I reckon they'll rate themselves a chance this week. Higgins and Cunnington were great again last week, but Todd Goldstein had an absolute day out. With Richmond's ruck injuries, this could happen again this week. That being said, despite their injuries, the Tigers did away with Essendon pretty easily in a wet Dreamtime game last week. Okay, I just heard that phrasing out loud, and when I planned this video, I didn't think about how that was going to sound. Hooley was excellent last week, though, and Martin has had two big games in a row, which is a really ominous sign for North Melbourne. I'm going to say the Roos performed pretty well on the night, but the Tigers will just be able to overcome them at the end. I'm tipping Richmond to win this game by 18 points. Next up, we have the Pies hosting Fremantle at the MCG. After a slow start to the year, the Pies continue to tick off challenges week after week. Last week, they held off a pretty plucky Sydney side who are pretty tough to beat even when they're struggling. Adam Trelaw was brilliant again last week. He had 38 possessions and that makes him the most prolific ball winner this season. For those who play AFL Fantasy, I hope you've all been captaining Brody Grundy in your team because he's notched up three 150s in a row. Or actually, if you're in my league, I hope you haven't been captaining him. If you haven't seen our post on Instagram, Brody Grundy is actually leading our True Footy Player of the Year award now. On the Dockers side of things, they're coming into this game coming off a miraculous victory over the Lions last week. After a string of near misses, the Dockers finally got a win and they've climbed back into the eight. Luke Ryan is definitely an underrated player. I've mentioned him before, but I think he's having an All-Australian quality season in the back half. His intercept marking and his quality ball use has been an important driving factor for the Dockers so far this year. Frio do need more out of Hogan though. For the first time in his career on the weekend, he actually went kickless. It's hard to see the Dockers being able to topple the Magpies at the MCG here. I'm going to say Collingwood put them to the sword this week and win by 49 points. Next up, we have the GWS Giants hosting Gold Coast down at Giant Stadium. It's been a tale of two very different seasons this year between the two expansion sides, but you could say that every year. The Giants have produced some pretty high level football at times this year and in the last two weeks have butchered some fairly average sides. Last week they were able to shirk their MCG hoodoo a little bit and they accounted for the Demons fairly easily. It's hard to see their good form coming to a halt this week against the Suns. The Suns have dropped six games in a row now and while they haven't been horrible, it's probably getting a little bit desperate in terms of getting a win. They're a young side who have exceeded expectations so far and they should be okay with where they're at, but I don't rate them as a chance this week. Last time these two sides met, the Giants won by 108 points. I'm expecting a closer game this time, but I still think the Giants are going to win by 71. The next game is Geelong hosting Sydney down at GMHBA Stadium. The Cats train continues to roll on as they've established themselves, in my opinion, as the clear best team of the competition this year. Last week was a fairly run-of-the-mill performance in Queensland getting the win over the Suns, but it was a fairly easy opportunity to bank four points. Dangerfield comes back into the side and he replaces Ablett, which is a good result for fantasy players. Tim Kelly also probably banked another three votes last week with 35 possessions and, and for me he's actually leading the Phantom Brownlow medal by three votes. The Swans did put up a pretty respectable performance against the Pies last week. They've put in three improved weeks of footy, but now Josh Kennedy's out of the side, which makes it very tough for him. Jared McVay comes back in to add some experience, and it'll be interesting to see how Daniel Menzel goes in his first game for the club. They got the win down there last year, but it's hard to see the Swans notching an upset this week. I'm tipping the Cats to win this by 44 points. The next game is a fairly enticing looking matchup as Brisbane take on Hawthorne at the Gabba. The Lions will be licking their wounds to some extent after last week's agonising loss to the Dockers in Perth. As a result, they've made four changes for this game and will need to improve on that performance to get a win here. A loss here would see them slide to six and five, and I think that would probably dent a little bit of the confidence going around about them making finals. They do kind of have the wood over the Hawks though, I reckon, so I do give them a bit of a chance here. Now, the Hawks exceeded my expectations last week with a fairly convincing win over the power. Although they do sit in ninth, I do get the feeling they've slightly got a bit of control back over their season. For them, Isaac Smith comes back into the side, which will serve as a timely boost. Their last trip to the Gabba though was when the Lions were struggling last 
last year and it didn't pan out well. The Lions belted them by 10 goals. I've got a feeling they might find it tough again this week and I think the Lions will try and make amends for their close loss last week. I'm going to tip the home team here. Brisbane's going to win by 14 points. Next up, we have Melbourne versus Adelaide in TIO Stadium up in Darwin. After what was a pretty promising performance of the week before last in Perth, the Demons let themselves down a bit with their performance against the Giants last week. They really didn't play well in a game. I thought they actually had a good chance of winning. They've reinforced their side with guys like Hannon, Salem and Hibbard who will be able to really reinforce that back line which I think is much needed. They sit at 3-7 and seven, and this is probably their last opportunity to get their season back on track. The Crows on the other hand come into this game after two disappointing games in a row. Both were good, tough games of footy but winnable games against evenly ranked sides nonetheless. Like the Demons, the Crows have reinforced their side with guys like Gibbs, Jenkins and Lynch coming back into the side. Gibbs and Jenkins in particular have struggled for form this year and this will be a big test for them coming back this week. Being in Darwin, it does make this game a little bit harder to tip, but I'm going to back the stronger side in Adelaide to get the win here. I'm going to tip Adelaide by 24 points. Next up is our game in China between St Kilda and Port Adelaide. Now the Saints have snapped a little bit of a losing streak with a win over Carlton last week that was a little bit unconvincing for mine. To be fair to them, they sit 5-5 five and five after 10 rounds and considering their injuries, that's a fair result for them. To me though, looking at the stats, I don't think the Saints midfielders are giving an even enough contribution. Touches definitely don't mean everything, but it's most weeks that they don't get more than two midfielders getting over 25 possessions. With this game being at a foreign neutral venue, this is a good opportunity for them to take a big scalp. The Power will be pretty disappointed with their loss to Hawthorne last week, but like the Saints, they don't have great availability at the moment. Hartlett and Lysette look to be available this week, although it does appear that Tom Rockliffe has been confirmed out. With this game being in China, there's always a few extra variables to worry about. It a really fair bit it will actually come down to which side can prepare better for the game considering the massive travel burden. All things being equal though, I expect the Power to get the win here and I'm going to tip them by 19 points. The second last game of the round is Essendon hosting Carlton at the MCG. This game is an interesting one for me because it always seems like this is a danger game for Essendon. Last year, Carlton were obviously wooden spooners and they did actually get the W over Essendon, so I do give them a chance in this game. The Bombers coming into this game having lost four of their last five, so they'll be desperate for a pressure relieving win. They're weakened slightly by Shield and Stringer not being available for this game, but I'd still back in the quality they do have available. As I said in the podcast, the Blues are doing this thing where they're saving their best performances against the good teams and they can't actually get over the line and they're saving their shit performances against the teams that have a realistic chance of beating. After a pretty average loss to the Saints last week, their stocks are depleted further with all of Thomas, McGovern and Simpson being unavailable this week. I do think the Bombers will be licking their lips here and I think they're going to pick apart the Blues and win by 34 points. The final game of the round is West Coast hosting the Western Bulldogs at Optus Stadium. The Eagles were seriously impressive last week and that's, even as a fan, not something I say that often. I do think they've been lacklustre for a lot of this year but the last two weeks they've really lifted and it's been pretty exciting to watch. Last week, they recovered a 33-point deficit in the third term to record what was probably one of their best home-and-away wins over Adelaide. They did it tough in wet and slippery conditions, which isn't usually the Eagles' forte. The Dogs will have a serious challenge in this game, stopping the in-form West Coast midfield. They've ruled out all of Crozier, Richards and Wallace, who are all pretty important role players for them. The Doggies are a funny side and I definitely give them a chance, but I think they're getting the Eagles at a bad time here. I think the Eagles are going to win this game by 46 points. Alright guys, thanks once again for tuning into my weekly tips video. Like I said, if you're keen, make sure you subscribe to my other channel, Jesse Thomas, the link for which is in the description. Or even subscribe to the True Footy YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thanks guys, I will see you next week for True Footy Reacts. Cheers.